Hey guys, welcome to the channel once again. And in this video, which is part two of a, well, two part series, uh, I'm gonna take the FK7, which I borrowed from Spoon. We're just gonna take it for a drive down the C1 and I'll give you my thoughts and impressions on it. If you haven't seen the first part, make sure to check out uh, as well. If you've already seen it, thank you guys for watching. Like I was saying in the previous video, you know, my goal for 2020 is to really, really go 2021 is really to go hard in the channel. So please check out the merch if it interests you. We got the sweaters, we got shirts, we got the hats. Uh, we got a whole bunch more uh, goods coming out. I'm gonna try to bring out some canvas prints, some stickers. I know you guys have been asking for stickers and banners and things like that. I've been working with some companies to try to make it happen. So I think we're really close and it's gonna be available in the store. So yeah, please check out my Patreon and my Patreon. And if you consider supporting that, it's gonna go a long way to going full time on YouTube as well. Enjoy the video and I'll see you guys uh, when you get back. Hey, I'm Albo and I love JDM cars and culture. In each episode in this multi-channel crossover series, I'll go on car adventures around Japan with Captain Bradford from JDM Masters, along with our car club and fellow YouTubers Japonic, Samet, Dustin Williams, and others. Join us as we do car stuff, explore Japanese culture, and show you what it's really like in the land of the rising sun. This is our JDM life, and we are the Super JDM Bros. Okay guys, so we're gonna head out now. We're gonna take the FK7, and I'm really excited to take it for a drive. So, yep, we just hop in, let's get going. But check this out. So actually, we could have gotten this as a rental, but they kind of like, they prepared this one for us. So we'll take, we'll take this one today. But this is, this is like, there's a possibility of taking this beautiful S800 out for for the week or for however long while work is being done that that's pretty insane how you know spoon is just basically entrusting me this dummy to this crazy legendary car while i'm getting my car service over here all right you can turn on ready okay this is cool this handlebar is in incredibly thin it's it's like a pencil and the people just have smaller hands back in the day or something because this shift knob is also incredibly small and we're actually gonna get the chance to take this out at one point dude this is this is crazy it's a micro version of the s2000 yes indeed it is and <laughs> wow One interesting little detail I really like is over here, you still have the carpet trim, just like in the S2000. It's got that carpet trim, so that's where that comes from, I suppose. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing that this car is the precursor to the S2000. It, it's like an S2000 for tiny people. I suppose people were just physically smaller, literally, back in the day. Probably two thirds the size because. And it's, it's got two gears lesser than your car. That's right, four gears, but surprisingly spacious actually, like in terms of how much legroom you have. It's so metal, so much metal and, and wood. A trip down memory, not even a trip down memory, it's just like going Another, back to the past. Yeah, it's a appreciating. blast into the past. And just the fact that they, they keep this here in such like restored condition. And the fact that we can just take a seat inside, this is incredibly cool. This is really incredibly cool. I'll be back in a couple days, but I'll be taking the FK7. I got the much stuff. All right, just gonna hop in. It's a full bucket, actually. So gonna hop in there. This is this is so modern. It makes my car feel like it came out of the prehistoric era. Everything looks like it was computer generated. There are all these rectangular shapes. So this is definitely a Honda from a new a new era, a new generation. And this is gonna be an interesting ride because I heard that this car actually makes quite a bit of power. This makes about 275 horsepower. So here we go. Ooh, very smooth, very quiet. All right, should I take off? And uh, we'll just meet around the corner? Okay. Go up here. Apparently this, this has 275 horsepower, which is much more than the Civics of yore, and it's not even a Type R. So just give your first impression driving it through the, the city. OK. 
Okay. So that's the LSD going. Yeah, the LSD. So quite loud. Um, it feels very big. It feels really, really big. I'm kind of like nervous about hitting just random people driving, but I think this is the same thing as every car. When you first drive it, it feels big, and then after a short time, it kind of shrinks around you. The the way that the windshield and the front bonnet is positioned, it's uh, really hard to see where the car ends. One thing that's nice though, and that's becoming less and less common these days, is just the fact that it's 2020, I'm driving a new car, and it's manual. So that's that's pretty rare these days. Uh, you could probably count on one hand the number of JDM sports cars so you can still pick with the, the manual transmission. Yeah, the, the size of this car is uh, quite, quite stressful. It feels like it's actually bigger than my my Forster SDI. It is, my And even this, yeah, the suspension settings on this, everything is a, uh, it's, it's, it's not too rough. Actually, yeah, yeah, it's a uh, spring surface store. So did it just stop by itself? That was interesting. Okay. Because modern see. cars have auto stop. Mm, okay, okay. Possibly because the bucket seat is like having me see it like a little bit lower. I feel like I'm like really down low, deep in the car. It feels huge. Ah, it's uh, it's interesting. I, I, mean, I think uh, the real test will be if you get to go on to the Stoko and take it for a little spin. So that should be fun. I'm just eating fried rice from the kombini and fried chicken. This captain was saying, "This is this is the life. <laughs> <laughs> this is that JDM life. This is." True JDM life. Sitting in front of the kombini, eating microwave fried rice. Spoon life with my spoon. Man, Jason, so you've been here like a while now, right? Yeah, I've been here almost three years now. What does JDM mean to you? The way people use it now, it's, it's just, they use it to describe Japanese cars. But when I was growing up in America, in LA, we just had imports and domestics. Japanese cars, mostly Hondas and those, those kind of cars. So anything Japanese was JDM? Anything back then, Japanese was an import. What about like the scene? Like what was considered like the JDM scene? Was that a thing or was it just like it was, modified cars? It was like people were modifying cheap Japanese cars, you know, um, Civics and Tecmas. Mm -hmm. um, we had other things too, mm. Mark 7s and stuff, but uh, they were basically modding their their first car. Could you ever have imagined that one day you would be here in Japan and driving this thing? No, actually, uh, somehow I just ended up in Japan and then somehow ended up buying a car. This is what you get. Like, she so happened to be a V-Spec, V-Spec 2. You're in Japan, might as well get that car that you always wanted to get that you couldn't get before. So, so the car I bought, I sourced it through. Yep. There's a shop called Garage Defend. Yeah. Uh, and they made like, yeah, Spencer. Yeah, you showed me, yeah, yeah. 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 And I remember the first video that I was in, because the, the title of the video was like, Searching for Jason's Dream Car. <laughs> and then the comments would be like, this guy seems awfully unexcited to, to, to buy his dream car, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know? Like, know you they're like, man, if I got my dream car, I'd be way more excited than this guy. Like, that's, that's what the comments said. On the Stoko, and I just, I just like a pull, I'll do it again, but this thing is fast. This thing's actually like legit fast. It feels like the Evo. It actually feels similar to my Bug Eye, which I had before. The suspension is a little bit stiff, but it's still definitely, Dailyable, but oh, man, let's let's see, let's see if I can just. Ooh, I love these strong brakes as well. The V Spec Two, Jason's V Spec Two. All right, this thing is pretty sick. This thing's pretty sick. I mean, like before we got onto the highway, we were like complaining about this and that, like the the digital gauge and like some of the plastics and like how it's really high. But honestly, a lot of that falls away once you once you like just floor it a bit. This thing is really this thing is fast, especially in second year. Like right now we're in third, right? But let's see. Whoa. 
let's let's go towards uh, the C1 loop. Right now we're on a number four. Man, this thing can turn. This helmet you cannot do. It's so confidence inspiring when you when you turn it. In my short time with the FK7, I had a ton of fun with this car. It's crazy to think that it makes the same amount of power as Jason's V-Spec 2 GTR. Granted, this car does have the full catalog of spoon parts, and for similar money, maybe you could just get an FK8 Type R. But for the right person, this might be the perfect car. We sit under burning sun, catching the waves, inhale, exhale. Reminisce in the bygone time, laugh till we cry, days flying by. Flying by. Love on delay, push play, let it roll and take you away. Love for a day, replay, we don't care about what they say and I go on. That's it for these two videos. Hope you guys enjoyed that and I will be seeing you in the next couple days. I'm not 100% sure yet which video I'm going to release, but it's uh, I'm working my way through a backlog as you probably can tell. And uh, yeah, we're going to put out 15 videos this month. I'm going to do my best and let's just see how we do and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you once again and peace out. Speed